Hi friend, we were going to start a new pedal today, but I got a package in the mail. So let's open this up and see what somebody sent us. That sounds good. Join me. Um, pieces and paper. Oh, look at that. Oh, I always wanted one of these. Way back in the day. These were a big item. It's like one of the pots is broken. Output. It's in the bag. So we're going to have to check that out. Screws are already out. Yeah, all right, let's open this up. Oh, look at that. There's no power adapter with this. I got directly into the wall. <laughs> Has a 12AX7 in it. Let's see what this, I wonder if it just needs this replaced. Let's see what happens when we replace it. Only one bolt holding this all together right now. Huh. Yeah, I always like these. I guess Eric Johnson used the, what was it called? It was the BK Butler, I believe, but it was the Boost. Tube Boost, maybe? I forget what it was called. All right, let's see if we can get this. Well, let's take this 12AX7 out first. We should test that. I guess I'll just stick it in an amp, right? It's a, it's a nice generic 12AX7, no brand. Probably the original. Let's see here. I'm going to get this out of here. Ah, yeah, see? That potentiometer was broken right there. So we're going to have to desolder that hmm, and put a new one in. Let's see what I got. It's a 500K, right? I think. Yeah, look at that. 500K audio taper. Let's make sure that's what this one says. It's broken off here. Boy, if this is all that would need, that'd be awesome. Yep, audio taper, 500K. Broken. All right, let's heat up this soldering iron, see if we get this out of here first. The only difference is I don't have a knurled version. So, this might not fit. Let me see if I have any more in here. Generally don't buy them because I always use the ones with the set screws in it. Doesn't look like I do. Nope. We're just going to go with this one. Let's just see if it works first. All right, let's get this out first. Oh, that's going to be hard to get out of there. I should just snip it, huh? Uh, Maybe, maybe. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to break that little piece off of the what's remaining of it. And that way you can pull out one at a time. See, I'm going to pull this out like this, put a little pressure on it, and then heat it from the other side. See? Now we have three parts right there that need cleaned out. Hmm, that's gonna be rough. Let's get our trusty old desoldering braid out. Let's see if we can get this cleared out. I have to use the solder sucker. It's pulling solder out, but it's not opening the holes. That's why we might have to use that solder sucker. Yep, let's try it. All right. That worked. The middle one looks clear, so let's just get this other side. Got it. How do you know? 
All right, I gotta put this in the same way. It has to go like this. These have to be bent. Let's see, can I see it in here? We're gonna have to bend these beads up like this. That should go right in like there. Hey, well, uh, that's not quite there because these are a little bit longer. Hmm. Well, see how this has a little bit extra here? And these so it would be way it would be almost a quarter inch sticking out the wrong way and it has to fit in here hmm I'll have to uh, try something different I'm actually have to cut these off like that let's try it I'll straighten these out like this okay got it bent down like that I guess I'm gonna have to cut these like this. Well, I'm going to try to put this one in there just to see if that's the only problem with it. If it's not, then we could work on it from there because I'm going to have to order another one without these this extra length of lead. But let's put it in and we'll solder it in place and we'll see what we could do from there. Let me break off this tab first. Not that we could put it in anyways, but I never use them. All right. That'd be really nice if that was the only problem with this, huh? Let's get some solder in there. See that last? There it is. All right. Now I'm going to stick this tube back in and see if it works. All right, I have this hooked up to my test box and it's going to the amp and whenever I switch it into the circuit, okay, now that is with or without the tube in and with or without the filter caps in as well. Okay, what that buzzing is implying to me is there's either power connected to the audio out, um, it could be a bad capacitor leaking DC or AC into that, or it's just a ground that's off. And I don't have a picture of the original circuit. And I'm gonna show you, if you look on here, someone was in there and they replaced that op amp, the TL072. Here's what the original most likely looked like there. And you can see the soldering jobs pretty crappy. So instead of trying to troubleshoot it in that state, I think what we're going to do is fire up Eagle and we're going to recreate this board in its entirety and we're going to make a new one and while we're waiting for Osh Park to create them and send them back to us we'll also tear this one 100% apart being as careful as possible not to lift any traces and what we will do is try to piece by piece make sure everything's correct um, 
it's a little labor intensive and it may not be worth doing, but let's try it. Um, some people had mentioned in the comments in a previous video that they wanted a tube preamp. Uh, so let's do it. First thing we're going to do is fire up Eagle. And we're going to make a new project. And we're just going to call this real tube. All right. Now we will make a new schematic. And when I bought this, it did come with a paper schematic. So we're just going to use this and we're going to lay it out. So let's do that. Uh, what we're going to do instead of uh, adding the transformer to the board itself, we're just going to make a place for two leads to go in. So let's do that. Let's call that a transformer. Let's see what that looks like. See, that's not what we want. We need jacks. <laughs> AC jacks. There we go. I'm just going to put that here. Attach this one to ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through here and very quickly, well, I'll make it quick for you in fast motion. I'll do all this. All right. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the schematic completed in Eagle. This looks like just a buffer circuit right here so that's before everything and this here is all a little bit of drive through an op amp that you control with the drive potentiometer and a little bit of coloring with the tube i doubt there's much drive from that uh, especially considering that we're only running 13 volts positive to 13 volts negative here so 26 volts total I'm not sure what the RMS is on that, so we'll have to figure that out. Uh, one problem is I noticed right in this area on the schematic, it says 220K. Can you see that? Right there by the output potentiometer. But there's no resistor marked on the schematic in that position. So I looked online and I saw different variations of this. Uh, they're supposed to be clone schematics and they're not the same. There's a lot of differences here with the values of the potentiometers in the tone stack and a few other changes. Uh, I don't know if they're considered improvements because there are some things that could be improved. Like here could have been a full wave bridge rectifier may have been better. A better choice but i'm sure because of the size of the enclosure that was a consideration uh, it all looks like a rather simple circuit the most complex part is this switching here which is kind of neat because it sends either a plus or minus voltage to here which changes the led color from red to green because these are reverse that's pretty neat uh, then this gets the plus or minus and it acts just like a comparator circuit I would imagine and it sends a plus or minus to here switching these transistors on and off for the switching circuit but what I don't get is why is it switching across this 1k resistor hmm that's interesting ah now I get it I have a missing part this tube is supposed to go from here to here so we have to add that wire. Aha, now it all makes sense, finally. I'm gonna try to make it neat. Go through here. There we go. Now that makes more sense to me. And this is gonna connect to here. Let's move these out of the way. There, that makes more sense to me. Because now, when this goes through here, when this is switched off, goes straight through here through this one and to the output when this is switched on goes through here instead of down this 
through the op amp, which offers a little bit of drive, depending on the potentiometer, and then through the tube. And it goes out to the tennis stack. Okay. I think what we're going to do is at least, at least, breadboard this part here and run it through the tube. Uh, we should breadboard the whole thing, but I can't find my large breadboard. I don't know what I did with it. I just want to make sure the values are all correct because I did find those other circuits online that had different values here. Uh, worst case scenario, we could change the values of the tone stack. Uh, you know what? I'm going to look at this one and see what is actually on here. Huh, that one's not marked. Yeah, it's this is this is accurate according to what's actually in the circuit. But what I'm going to do next is create this on a board and I'm going to try to stay as close as possible to what we have here. I'm going to end up measuring with the calipers uh, to get the dimensions correct so it still fits in this enclosure. But we're going to have to make some changes for adding these tensiometers unless I can find these that are flush mount like this. All right. But I think that's all we're going to do today. Let me save this, the changes. If you have any questions about this circuit, let me know in the comments. I've been pretty good about answering questions and I've run into a problem with my current web page. I have been getting a ton of hacking attempts. So I installed a plugin that helps with that. And what it does is it blocks IPs and it keeps that IP blocked for at least two months. Uh, so if somebody's IP number gets caught up in that, uh, it doesn't even have to be them that's uh, doing the hacking attempt because hackers, they run through VPNs and use their own IPs. And as far as I know, I'm not an expert on things like that, but I've had just a couple, but that's important to me that you're able to download the uh, libraries that I've provided. So if you have a problem with that, definitely contact me. Um, I have an email address, help me at homespuneffects.com that you could contact me at. Right now, uh, I'm going to leave it as is, but I'm going to, I'm going to take down that plugin, I do believe. Uh, if it's just that I've been getting so many attempts to break into my site and what is that worth to anybody? I don't understand. But if you have a problem, make sure you let me know and I will help you out. Uh, even if it comes down to me emailing you the libraries, that's fine too. And remember on the Mad Beam Pedals libraries, you have to be logged in to see it. It's on part of the forum that is blocked to the public. You have to be actually a member, but you don't have to participate. You just have to sign up. Okay. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day.